is Mrs. Basin, and in this screencast we're going to try talk about driving forces for reactions. So when we ask ourselves why do chemical reactions happen or why do reactions take place, um, we attribute that to something called driving forces. So what this means is basically when you try to react to things, sometimes there is a reaction and sometimes there's not. So what determines whether or not a reaction will take place are these driving forces that we're going to talk about. So the first one that we want to look at is something called a precipitation reaction. So if you remember, um, a precipitate is one of the indicators of a chemical reaction. So it's a solid substance formed from two solutions. Um, so if a precipitate forms, or the formation of a precipitate, is one of the driving forces for a chemical reaction. So that's one of the things that indicate that a chemical reaction has taken place. So if we look at the example, um, this was the reaction that you guys got to do in one of your lab stations. Um, this is potassium iodide reacted with lead nitrate. So those are both the clear solutions that you see here. Um, and then when that reacts, you get a precipitate, which is this yellow lead iodide, and then you also get aqueous potassium nitrate. So if you notice, the um, symbols are there also for the states that the reactants are in, the products are in. So potassium iodide is aqueous, lead nitrate is aqueous, and then on the other side of the equation we get solid lead iodide. And aqueous potassium nitrate. So we're going to look in a little more detail at this reaction on the next slide here. So what happens is when you have a precipitation reaction, if we could see um, these solutions separately, so let's say we look at our potassium iodide solution. When we say it's aqueous, that means the ions are in solution or dissociated in the solution. So in the solution we have K plus ions and I minus ions. For our lead nitrate solution, that is also aqueous, so we have some Pb plus 2 ions, and then we also have some NO3 minus ions. So then on the other side, when you mix those two together, and we look at these all combined now, we still have the K plus ions in solution, because those are still aqueous. We still have our NO3 minus, but now we have the solid lead iodide. So what you'll see there is you start to see this yellow solution, or I'm sorry, this yellow solid end up in the bottom of the beaker. So what this yellow solid is, is lead iodide. So those ions are no longer in solution, they have formed this yellow precipitate. So that is our first one, is the formation of a precipitate is our first driving force. Our second driving force that we can look at is something called the transfer of electrons, which we call those types of reactions an oxidation-reduction reaction. When um, something is oxidized, um, it loses electrons. When something is reduced, it gains electrons. And we'll talk more about that later on. But when you have the transfer of electrons, where something loses electrons and something gains electrons, um, that falls under this category of oxidation-reduction. So if we look at our picture here, what's going on? is we have copper, so this tree form that you see in this blue solution was um, originally copper, and that was placed in a clear solution of silver nitrate. And you can't see that anymore because this is a picture of after the reaction has taken place. So what's taking place now is that you have solid copper um, forming, or solid copper on the little branches of that tree that you can no longer see the copper on, and then that blue solution is now copper nitrate. So again, on the next slide, we're going to look at a little more detail of this. So what happens in this case is that you start out with solid copper, so this would be like copper, say maybe a copper wire, you know, in that case it was like a little copper tree, so this is copper, and then you had a solution of silver nitrate, so this had silver ions and nitrate ions. And then what happens, once those are all placed in the same container, now you have solid silver, and then you have copper ions and nitrate ions. So what's happened here is copper has gone from being a neutral atom to a Cu plus 2. So this one has lost electrons, okay? So later on we'll talk about how that means that it was oxidized. For the other one, we have silver 
which went from being silver ions in the beginning, Ag+, it gained an electron and it became silver metal. So it had a gain of electrons, which means it was reduced. So again, we'll talk about the oxidation reduction piece of that more, but another driving force is when the electrons are transferred. So copper lost electrons, so we could even show this as two electrons here, and then silver picked up those electrons. So copper became went from a solid to an ion, and then the silver went from being an ion to a solid. Our third driving force is an acid-base reaction, um, which is also known as the formation of water. So this, um, just like the precipitation reaction, if you notice, fits under that double replacement category reaction. So there's two different ion switching places, but in this case, instead of having a precipitate formed, you have water being formed. So you see here we have HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, reacting with sodium hydroxide, which is a base, and then that forms water. So similar to the precipitation reaction, but instead of getting a precipitate, you get water formed. So that's our third driving force. Our last driving force that we need to look at is the formation of a gas. So this is an example of a formation of a gas reaction. Um, when you take copper metal and you put nitric acid on it, which is what you're seeing in this picture here, um, you get nitrogen dioxide gas. So what this is, this gas that you see in the picture, this kind of yucky brown looking gas, that's nitrogen dioxide. Um, and then you also get copper nitrate which is kind of what you're seeing in this kind of greenish solution in the bottom, and then water is also generated here. So our key driving force here is the formation of a gas.